and societies in ancient India were ruled by women. Really? And men weren't allowed around women without a licence and they were put in a corner and told off for being sexist. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're going to do a song from your, from your new album for us now? God, what a need you. She's never happy unless she's complaining about something. <laughs> oh, you're right there, Tay. And I believe this new song is about the Catholic Church. Oh, here she goes. <laughs> That's right. It's about how the church in Ireland secretly had lots of potatoes during the famine and they hid the potatoes in the pillows and sold them abroad at potato fairs. <laughs> and the Pope closed down a lot of the factories that were making the potatoes and turned them into prisons for children. God Almighty! She says that as if there was something sinister about her at all. I mean, what is the problem with her? She seems to be taking the whole Catholic thing a bit seriously, Ted. <laughs> yes, Dugan. I mean, it's just a bit of a laugh. Stop talking, Dugan. <laughs> anyway, it's this whole radical feminism lark that really gets my go. <laughs> Mad! Uh, uh, this idea that the Catholic Church has some sort of negative attitude to women. Ted, she's doing her song. Big man in frocks <laughs> Tell us what to do Mrs. Doyle, you're a woman. What, what do you make of all this stuff? Do you think that the Catholic Church is a bit sexist? Oh, God, no, Father. I've always found the Church very responsive to my views. I mean, I remember one time I was having terrible troubles at home and the Church gave me great support then. Now, I know a lot of people like to run the Church down, but they're just a load of old moaners. Moan, moan, moan. So, thanks for asking, Father. But, no, no, I have no complaints at all. Yeah, great. <laughs> Give us all your rules. That's not the right words. Women rule the land of Chirnano. <laughs> oh no! Great! God, he goes mad! if I'm a second late with this drink. <laughs> Father Jack, your afternoon drink. <laughs> you know, you should really get a haircut. You don't want to go too far down that Bob Geldof road. <laughs> oh, Ted, that's a bad road. It is indeed, Dougal. And once you've gone down it, there's no coming back, as Bob himself would tell you. <laughs> oh! <laughs> what did you pay for the shelves, Ted? God, I, uh, I don't really remember, Liam. These won't last you. Look at that. She you could talk that into coming down. Well, uh, <laughs> they've lasted fine until now. Give us a go. Ah. Oh, God, Ted, I, I can feel it beginning to give. <laughs> <laughs> ah, look at that, Ted. Sure, it's falling apart. <laughs> How about a little cup of tea, Liam? Fair enough. So, um... <sighs> what did you want to talk to me about? Oh, yes. Now, you were planning on going to the Lovely Girls Festival this year, weren't you? Oh, yes. I, I never miss the Lovely Girls Festival. My absolute favourite time of year. Oh, well, how is Miss Lovely Girl 1995 doing? Error of God, Ted, we had to strip her of her title. Oh, God. Why? We found out she'd been in a film called Stallion Farm. <laughs> I heard it was a bit rude. Anyway, I'm chairman of the organising committee this year, and I was wondering if you wanted to judge it. Judge it? Oh, God, Liam, I'd love to. Oh, and there's the dinner afterwards, isn't there? Oh, yes, yes. You have the honour of taking the winner out for a meal. And I think, who pays for it? It's, it's not me. Did I hear that somewhere? Oh, yes, that's right. We brought that in a few years ago. You have the honour of taking her out for a meal, and she has the honour of paying for it. Lovely. <laughs> How much does that stereo set you back, Ted? <laughs> About £100. I could have got you a great one for half that. <laughs> Careful, Liam. Uh, anyway, you were saying... Oh, yes. Now... When you take the lovely girl out to dinner, could you ever persuade her to wear one of me mammy's dresses? She could use the publicity. Right. Uh, how's the business going? Oh, great! She sold one last week. Uh, how many is that sold this year? That'd be one. 
You see? <laughs> anyway, basically, you see, we thought it would be a bit of a laugh getting a priest to judge it this year. Also, it eliminates any sexual aspect to the thing. <laughs> or am I wrong, huh? I hope you won't be tempted by all those lovely girls. Oh, there's no chance of that, Liam. Because <laughs> we've had problems with that sort of thing before, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Ted, we really have had problems with that sort of thing before. <laughs> All right, you don't have to worry there, Liam. Right, I'll be off. Goodbye, Liam. How much did you pay for the door, Ted? <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it came with the house. God, there she is again. <laughs> She's all over the place. <laughs> Cliff Power. What does that mean? Don't know. I knew a father, Clint Power. <laughs> Maybe she's having a go at him. What, what's the interview like? I didn't really read much of it, Ted. Uh, she's going around the country at the moment. I think she wants to buy a house on an island and live in it. And uh, she has her eye on some godforsaken place off the West Coast. <laughs> really? Did it mention what island she had her eye on? Craggy Island. Yeah, Craggy Island's a place for me. I, I see it as being a safe haven for those who wish to escape the hypocrisy of the mainland. Oh, God. I, I, I wish to create a world free of sexual and religious intolerance. No, 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 that's terrible news. <laughs> right. Basically, we just have to stand our ground. If she's on the island, I'm bound to bump into her. I'll just tell her, the people of Craggy Island will not stand for a world free of sexual and religious intolerance. <laughs> no way, Jose! <laughs> right, Father. The roof should be OK now. <laughs> I hoovered the upstairs and I did the attic top to bottom. What else? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I washed your car. Also, I built a little greenhouse beside the garage. <laughs> would that be all for today? Oh, Mrs. Doyle, uh, any chance of a cup of tea for your two favourite priests? <laughs> God, Ted, it's only 11. What are you doing up? I want to get away early to the lovely girls' competition. I wouldn't mind going myself, but I don't think I'd know what to say to a lovely girl. God, Dougal, there's no end to things you could talk about. You could ask them what their father does for a living, if they have a boyfriend, Dresses. Anything to do with clothes and perfume, basically. Clothes is easiest because men wear clothes, but we don't wear perfume. Except Father Bigley. Except Father Bigley. <laughs> anyway, if you ever meet a woman, I'm sure you'll be able to deal with it. Just be yourself, Dougal. Be yourself, make them feel at ease, and the golden rule, always let them have their way. It's easiest in the long run. Anyway, I better be off. I don't want to keep those lovely girls waiting. Okay. Be... Yourself. <laughs> How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> She's coming for you, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she got her eye on Paddy. Oh, 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 oh that's not a coin there. Oh, no, Father. Oh, we're getting the eye from all the idols, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I hope you don't get into any mischief. Oh, you know us, Father. I do. And that's the trouble. Lads, <laughs> lads, lads. Sorry, I have to go. The competition starts any second. Now, Father, that's not on impersonating Sir Bob. And what would all those other Live Aid people think? Peter Gabriel and Queen and the other bands that went on earlier in the day. And what about Phil Collins flying all the way to Boston? Oh! <laughs> Shoddy workmanship. That's what it is. Shoddy, shoddy, shoddy. Ted, for crying out loud, will you get up there? The girls won't stay lovely forever, you know. Sorry, Father Jack just punched me in the stomach. Oh, God. Hello, lovely girls. <laughs> no, 
look at them there. Walking around. Mrs. Doyle. Uh, someone at the door, Mrs. Doyle. <laughs> Mrs. Doyle. Hello there. Well, Imelda, you're a lovely girl, although I hear you had a bit of bad luck recently. Your dog was knocked down by a car and killed. No, that was... that was my father. <laughs> it says here that you're 22. 19. Right, and uh, you were born in Mayo. That's a lovely part of the world. Uh, uh, Dundalk. Dundalk, yeah. And uh, it says here that you're uh, a black belt in karate, you know, so, so what would you do if I came at you like that? <laughs> All right. I tell you what, you look through my notes and, and stop at any point of information that's actually true. I will indeed, Father. You haven't told me your name yet, Father. Him? Be yourself. Right. Uh. <laughs> Father Dougal Maguire. All right. This is a great house. I really love the crude religious imagery. Yes, I like it. Are you all right there? <laughs> How's your bra? What? Your bra. Is it comfortable? <laughs> Do you have a bra? It's not too tight, is it? Because <laughs> you can loosen it if you want. Take it off, sure, go on. Or would you like some tea? I'll tell you what, I'll make the tea and you take your brow. <laughs> oh, I... Isn't that Bob Geldof there? No, it isn't. Hold a second. It is, you know. He's looking a bit rough. I should have lost all his money in that live aid thing. Well, I'm not sure if it is, Bob Geldof. Hang on there a second. Excuse me, are you... Back a... off! <laughs> He's himself, all right. <laughs> and now, walking. Oh. Look at them there, walking around. <laughs> Look out there, Mary. Doesn't Mary have a lovely bottom? Careful there, Ted. That might offend the girls. Rightly. Of course. They all have lovely bottoms. <laughs> Actually, um, Mrs. Doyle is the one who makes the tea and she's out. <laughs> Why don't you just make the tea? But uh, Mrs. Doyle makes the tea. Anyway, I'd better just tell you the reason I'm here. I'm looking for a house around the area and I really, really like this one. I'm sorry, Joan. Your sandwich exceeds the required six centimetres in width, and that means it's between Amelda and Mary in the lovely laugh tiebreak. <laughs> in order to hear your lovely laugh, I'll have to tell you a joke. So here we go. This is my Robin Williams impression. Okay, here we go. This is the joke now, okay? Secretary. Sir, the invisible man is in reception. Got that? Boss. Tell him I can't see him. <laughs> I think I have to say Amelda's laugh is nicer. I'm sorry, Mary. That means Amelda is the winner. <laughs> and there's your certificate of loveliness. And, of course, you'll be going to dinner tomorrow in Craggy Island's top seafood restaurant, the Thai Cottage. And uh, who will you be inviting to dinner? I'll be bringing my mother. Just have another go at that, Amelda. Oh, yes, I'll be inviting you, Father. Yes, you will! And you'll be It's not me. It's not me who pays. <laughs> so there she is, the winner of our lovely girl 1996. It's Amelda! <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Ted. How did the lovely girls' competition go? Brilliantly well, and as is the tradition, I get a free dinner tomorrow night. Great. Is Jack with you? Oh, God, Jack. Wow. 
You really knocked Michael Hutchins unconscious. I battered him! <laughs> anyway, anything happened while I was away? No, I can't think of anything anyway. Oh, your one uh, Neve Connolly called. Neve Connolly? What did you say to her? Oh, don't worry, Ted. It was fine. I just took your advice about talking to girls and it was grand. She's upstairs now. Sh she's still here? Yeah, actually, I think she's in the toilet. Oh, hello again. Um, I was just telling Ted you were in the toilet. <laughs> hello there. <laughs> Father Ted Crilly. You must be Miss Connolly. <laughs> oh, I suppose that's sexist now, to call a young lady Miss. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's too late for me to change my ways. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> well, it's, it's getting kind of late. All right, well, I, I won't keep you. Bye, so. Bye. Goodbye, Father. Yes, goodbye. <laughs> oh, Ted, uh, that's the other thing. I, I sold Neve the house. <laughs> what? <laughs> Actually, I, I just gave it to her. <laughs> Wait a minute! Neve's going to turn it into a studio. She said we can have all the recording time we want. Wait now, wait now. You gave her the house. I mean, how... Ted, wait a second. Where are we going to live? <laughs> M Miss Connolly, Miss Connolly, there's, there's been a, a, a terrible misunderstanding here. <laughs> Look, I have to record a duet over the phone with Peter Gabriel, so I hope you don't mind, but Nigel and Tony will show you out. Well, I'm sorry, but we're not going anywhere. Right. I'm not staying here to be insulted by you. Come on, Dougal, we're leaving. I wouldn't stay in this house if you gave me a million pounds. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did I say there? I meant to say, please give us back the house. What did I say? Why are we outside? Ted, where are we going to live? <laughs> God almighty, Dougal. I go away for a few hours and you've managed to give away the house. I mean... Take me through it again. What exactly happened? I was just sticking to your rules, Ted. Uh, number one, be yourself. No, 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 no. Be yourself is just something people say. Never be yourself with women. Never, never, never. <laughs> what then? Well, I, I tried to make her more comfortable, uh, like you said. Yes. So I asked her to take off her bra. <laughs> we'll come back to that one. But, but, but you gave away the house. What about the golden rule, Ted? Always give them what they want. No. No, that's the silver rule. The golden rule is if anyone is ever talking to you again, think about what you're saying and then don't say it and then just run away somewhere. Right? All right. This is a long shot, but it's our only hope. I'm going to leave this paper and pencil here and hopefully in the morning, God will have written down what we should do, OK? <laughs> that is a long shot. It's our only hope, Dougal. Come on, God. They got right back. No, I didn't. <laughs> Bollocks, anyway. <laughs> right, I'm going to have to handle this myself. Basically, the thing is, the house. It, it really wasn't Dougal's to give away. <laughs> so it would be great if you could give it back to us. I, I think he'd be interested in the kind of work we're doing here. We're a very progressive parish. I hope it's not some kind of hideaway for paedophile priests. That whole thing disgusted me. Well, Neve, we're not all like that. I mean, say if there's 200 million priests in the world and 5% and of them are paedophiles, that's still only 10 million. <laughs> no, what we wanted to create here was a world free of intolerance and hypocrisy. Really, Father? Yes, yes, if there's one thing I hate, it's hypocrisy. I mean the sexism that is right <laughs> It's appalling. Yes, yes. God, it gets my goat. Well, we're very different here on Craggy Island. Uh, we don't like any of that kind of uh, thing. Ah, Ted! Who is this lovely girl? Now, Ted, you were only supposed to pick one, you know. Don't call me a lovely girl. I've sold 20 million records. What? <laughs> anyway, Ted, what do you think? Huh? <laughs> this one or this one? You know, I like this one. Well, uh, that's a nice one, Liam. Oh, I don't know, but I like the colour of this one. Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> well, uh, they're both great. I'm sure whichever one you pick, it'll be just lovely. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> you see? All sorts of alternative lifestyles catered for. <laughs> We're a refuge for priests like uh, Father Leem. Where else could he give a sermon while dressed like uh, Joan Crawford? <laughs> please, Neve. Please, don't take away our house. 
Please don't stop our good work here. You know, I have to say, Father, I had no idea that priests could be involved in such good work. You probably have that old-fashioned view of the drunken old lecherous priest. But, uh, <laughs> that stereotype is long gone, I assure you. <laughs> Father Billy would be one of our more uh, old-style priests. <laughs> he, he likes to pop around for, um, uh, you know, a good old debate once in a while. <laughs> he came from upstairs? Yes, he, he, he likes hiding around the house so he can spring a topic on me. <laughs> like, maybe he'd be hiding in the bathroom and I'd go to the toilet and he'd suddenly jump out and say, Women priests! And I'd have to think very fast and say, I'm in favour of them! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the main thing I wanted to say, Neve, is we're huge, huge fans of yours here. I'd say we must have every album you ever made. Would you like me to sign them for you? <laughs> oh, that's, that would be great, <laughs> could you? Yes. Of course you should stay here. As soon as I've signed the albums, I'll give you the keys back. Well, I'll just go and get the records. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Records. What would you yeah. like me to put on them? Don't care. <laughs> Father, I finished digging that drainage ditch. No, Mrs. Doyle. Now I know you wanted me to clean those roof slates tonight. Mrs. Doyle, no, don't. No, no I, I thought I might do them tomorrow when there's less chance of me falling off and being killed. <laughs> And then Sting fell down the stairs. <laughs> Will Father Ted be coming later? <laughs> no, he has to stay home so Mrs. Doyle can come out. It's the only reason I gave him the house back. One night off every week for Mrs. Doyle. Maybe I should just go and check on them. <laughs> Sit down. Now, come on, let's enjoy ourselves, sisters. No men around, we can do what we like. Is that meat? <laughs> Do I still have to pay for this? There's no butt on the kettle! Where are the tea bags? 